Welcome to the last tackle as we look back on week nine of the Super League season and what a week it was. More misery for the Rhinos and the Giants. Those two are bottom of the Super League table. We'll look at that and more here on the last tackle. Welcome back to the last tackle then. Myself, Mark Wilson, joined as always by Gary Schofield and Phil Kaplan, two uh, Leeds fans amongst our ranks and uh, two worried Leeds fans. Surely, Phil Kaplan, when are Leeds going to win again? Oh, why, why worried? Uh, there, there are extenu- next to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, but isn't this what we wanted from the competition? You can focus on those at the bottom if you like, or we could say the Easter period covered three games, which have just finished, and we should praise Hull and Tom Johnson because they're the real stories. That, I'd, I'd rather do that. I mean, that you can make extenuating circumstances for Leeds. They look like a collection of individuals at the moment who are trying too hard, who are wounded, who are in a place that they're not used to, um, who are in a spiral. The, the question would be to Gary, because he's the professional sportsman amongst us, this most elusive commodity in sport, confidence. What happens when you lose it? How do you get it back? Well, it's gone, that is for sure. And uh, I think what uh, the Leeds players are doing at the moment to get that confidence back, first of all, they've all got to stop sulking. They've all got to stop sulking. And um, and you mentioned there uh, with Leeds' performance uh, on Friday, you know, trying too hard. To be honest with you, Phil, some of that defence on Friday was pathetic. The people it, are trying to solve problems it, it, individually. But, 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 rather yeah, than... well, indivi- yeah, individually. But, but then what they're doing, they're saying, well, oh, why can't you do a little bit of that? Why can't you do I don't want to do it all. As a team, that team's not there anymore. That bond, what they've had, that never say a day attitude has gone missing. For some reason, mm-hmm. it's gone missing. And um, the hole what leads are in, they're in a big hole and they're nearly at the bottom at the moment. How you get the confidence back, um, I wouldn't know, but one thing for sure, they need a leader out there. They need somebody to grab the bull by the horns and shake it and say, hey, listen, Listen, we're far better than this. Let's stop sulking and, I, and go I, out there and do what we're trying to do. I think they will get that with Danny Maguire because uh, obviously he, he clearly couldn't be expected to have a, a huge impact over the full 80 minutes. I mean, only played 30 minutes this year. The organisation was slightly better while he was out there, but he tired towards the end, which is absolutely understandable. And when Holkar, who were absolutely superb <laughs> on Friday night, as indeed I think they were on Easter Monday at Wigan, when they, they went with a team with 13 players out, Three academy debutants and ten minutes before the end were leading that game. Well, that, I, that's a real show of character. Yeah, but Phil, yeah, but Phil, yeah, but Phil at the end, listen, we should let, praise let, that. Yeah, but yeah, oh yeah, let's let's praise a little bit of you know, I guess from a point of view, Hulk is a rover so for their effort and commitment. But let's not forget this: Leeds walloped them fifty nil mm-hmm. in the Challenge Cup final. Let's not forget Hulk is and Rovers were before the beat Leeds were second bottom in the league. Mm-hmm. Well, Kiss and Rovers are that good, have they? Well, Sean Lunt made a huge difference. Oh, yeah, he, he would do. Yeah, he would Absolutely. do. I mean, yeah. when, I mean, they took a risk with Campes. He, he, he didn't look fit from the minute he ran out. And after 13 minutes, he was playing on the wing and limping. But actually, in some ways, the best thing that could have happened was that he came off. Because not only did Lunt come on, who was the Lunt that we've seen at his very best, but Clarkson moved out of hooker into the second row, had a real impact playing out wide. And Maurice Blair, who's been really good in Campese's absence, went back to controlling the game at standoff. And they had that axis. Uh, that's what Leeds haven't got at the moment. That's what certainly Huddersfield haven't got at the moment. And it's really interesting to look at all of the sides, identify who their one key player is, and if they're not there, what difference it makes. So you look at, for example, Widners at the moment going through a difficult run. They haven't had Kevin Brown. Salford going through a difficult run. They haven't had Robert Louis. Warrington, who were the team that we're looking at, are now going to go through a run without... Sandow. So it's going to be. It's, it's interesting. Mm. It, it is a real shame that too many of the clubs have one player who is a key player that everybody else gravitates around. Okay. Well, we were going to talk about the success of the Easter weekend. That was Wakefield. That was Hull FC. But we are on Leeds now. Let's talk about them. Um, next to bottom. Yep. Can they still make the the top four? They're only eight points behind, but. We're, you know, when it could, we're nearly a third of the way through the season. We said we'd judge it after Easter. I think that that was a fair time that everybody would have played a significant amount of games against all the other teams to say there is a form line now that we can look at. And I thought it was interesting this week that Paul Anderson came out and said we're now not looking at top four. We're looking at survival. We don't want to be in the in the bottom four. And and they've only got two points less than Leeds. So Leeds are in that similar position. They really can't afford to probably lose more than two more games to to genuinely expect to even have a chance of getting in the top four. They do, like so many of the clubs do, have half a dozen players to come back in, some of whom are really significant to them. 
Um, if they can keep the guys that are starting to come back on the field, the Ablets and the Maguires, the Jones Buchanans, yes, they can get out of it. To be honest with you, um, I think when you look at Leeds' next four fixtures, Salford away, and we know Salford this year, you know, a better team. You know, I'll emphasise that team again. You know, the, the ethic what they've got there. They play them at Salford, and then they've got Hull at home the week after the flying, and then away games against Saints. Okay, they may not be playing well, but still, you know, they're playing better than Leeds at the moment. And then they go to Warrington. I can't see where Leeds' next win is coming from, Phil, to be honest with you. We talk about that confidence there, and the confidence the teams that they're going to be playing against, they're going to say, hey, what a time this is to be playing the Leeds well, Rhinos because I, the shot, the I shot think at the moment. Um, Easter Monday showed that with a game against Wakefield. Uh, you know, Wakefield were great and tenacious, and we can talk about whether we should be playing two, three fixtures over Easter, but it was Leeds that shot themselves in the foot with the last play of the game. So even from setting themselves up to go for a drop goal that might have won it, suddenly a wrong option taken, a ball dropped, and they've lost it. And they need to do what Wakefield did. Surely though, for, they need to jagger with. Surely though, for, right? Let's let's have a look at the Leeds fixtures then over the Easter period. Cass, Wakefield, and Hulkerson Rovers. Even though Leeds have got a few players, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Surely that's seventeen. What Leeds are putting out. There's enough quality there for them to beat Cass, Wakefield, and Hulkis and Rovers. Surely. Oh, I'm, I'm not doubting the fact that there is. I'm just saying that when confidence goes, which is this most elusive commodity in sport, players start doing things that are out of character. So if somebody like, for example, Zach Hardacre, who pulled off a magnificent tackle at Castleford to stop Solomona when he looked all on a scorer, drops a high ball, and from that high ball, Castleford score. It's, it's uncharacteristic mistakes from players who wouldn't normally make them. So it's not necessarily about the personnel that are out there, it's about why are they making those mistakes, what pressure do they feel under, what, what hole are they in that they've not been in before that they need to come to terms with. And, and that's where, again, I think if you, if you scrape a win, it starts that move again. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, they need to, they need to start scraping very, very quickly because mm. they, are in that, they are in that big hole now. And uh, as I say, they don't want to be looking around at, uh, as we mentioned here, individuals. The individuals themselves take a long hard look in the mirror and say, yeah, I don't really think I'm doing what, what I should be doing here. They, and, then, and that's yeah. how you build confidence. And, 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 they, come around and they haven't got any combinations going this year because they've not been able to pick the same team on consecutive weeks. So There's again, a lot, all, lot of teams like that. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, teams absolutely. like that, Phil. And it there? does affect you. know, Castleford are a prime one there. Mm. You know, we looked at their team yesterday mm, at the Jungle. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 10 or 11 of their mm. players. And realistically, 10 probably would have got in the, in the 17. And so. Another question Another question I'd like to I'd like to ask as well, and uh, to say for you, you watch Leeds and exactly like I do, literally nearly every week. And yesterday, I saw the two players who were playing at Featherstone, uh, in Leeds Boots, Jordan Lilly and Baldwinson. Well, you can't tell me now, the way that Leeds are playing with no creativity whatsoever, Jordan Lilly should not be playing at number seven. And then also as well, right, Young Baldwinson, Young Baldwinson, the way he's playing, that Galloway, the way that Garber or Garby's, whatever his surname is, is playing. He's and, doing all you know, right. And, he's doing all right. Check and, the stats. And, 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 Garber's and, and, doing all right. I'm not a stats man. I'm not a stats man. Garber's and also doing to okay. Cuthbertson, the way he's playing, surely giving a young, vibrant England, English kid who would want to put that shirt on and to prove a point and go out there and give his well, best it, the, because they are at the moment absolutely the, rubbish. They're doing that with Malali. He's the guy who's being given the opportunity. Um, so that they are offering that to right, a young but, English right, forward. Another, another thing what I'll say then, the way that they are playing, and that Falloon as well, who's playing absolutely rubbish. So there's four of their overseas players. If they were English players, they'd be dropped. But these four players will not be dropped. Do matter how bad they're playing, no, they will not be I think, dropped, I think you're being harsh there. I think if you do look at the stats, oh, Cuth right. Cuthbertson is, is changing the way I'll he's playing. I'll say what's important at the moment, Phil, is the scoreboard. Absolutely. It's the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. And that is a huge but problem. Saying, not just for the Leeds uh, players, but the supporters as well. They want to ask questions. And some of the, one of these questions, I was at the doctor's surgery this morning, right? Doctor's right. surgery this morning, and it's, and it's a Leeds fan who was there. And she said to me, "Oh, Scotty, what's going on? You know, do you think uh, do you think there's anything wrong?" So they said, "Well, you know, the dressing room they're losing a bit of confidence." And then she said, "Where they've been brainwashed a little bit of time." The supporter says, "Oh, is it because they've lost the training facility?" That is important. Oh, please, that is do important. Me a no, it well, it's not. Well, let me it just say this: important. you go down to Castleford, you go down to Castleford. Have you seen their training facility? But they've got big tires outside. But they've got chunks of wood outside. Load of rubbish. Well, but the Pampers then get down to Weldon Road, get down to Wakefield then, and do it. Do the hard yakka because that's what they need to do. Well. I I suspect as well that it's, 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 anybody it's about it's about routine, isn't it? There, there are, I, I heard a story on Friday, and I, again, I can only go with, with what you're told by people that know a lot better than I do. At the moment, they, they're using quite a few public gyms, so they're, they're moving around the city because they haven't got their own facility, but the equipment is not made for professional athletes. They cannot you know what, physically well, you know get what, in Well, I'll tell you what, the them, them players who want to dry their eyes in, dry your eyes. 
Do you idolise a stop salt? This is what I'm saying about stop salt. If you had stop to, if you had, you know some crystals. If you had to move out of home for six months and live somewhere else, it would all well, be foreign to you. Oh, you caught, don't individual. you? You caught, well, don't you? Phil, hold, hold on, Phil. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Civil war in the rhinos camp on uh, the last tackle. Wow, uh, we could do it now. Hey, Matt, just listen, to be honest with you, we're, we're, too, hold on, on. We're, we're two Leeds fans. We want Leeds to be at the top of the league, but at the end of the day, we can't keep making excuses for it. Yeah. At this moment in time, they're in a huge hole, they're playing rubbish, and they have got the quality on that park. Even the 17 what they're putting out, they've got quality. I and, agree they need to with start that. and they need to start performing. I think excuses that weren't being used as excuses are now coming out as excuses, Phil. Well, I beg to differ. On maybe, that. I think maybe. There's a, there's a lot of one percenters. Maybe. That add up to Michael some Carter's reason. got his hand in his pocket and gone to Featherstone to yep. use their training facility. Leeds made over a million quid last year. Mm. Why are they not putting their hand in the uh, pocket well, and doing they, similar? They are rebuilding Kirks. So they're ready in June. They're ready in June. Why are they the, not doing something now then? I'm not sure there's anywhere they could go at the moment. but Okay. It's a factor. It's an excuse. Picking there's a lot of championship clubs could do with a few thousand quid. They'd be quite happy to share their facilities. Uh, as part-time clubs aren't getting used during the day. Well, just a point. Again, I suspect that they have investigated those avenues, but Maybe it's just an issue. Maybe they have. It's, it's not the issue, it's an issue. Is um, it, Just one question from me. Is the fact that Leeds are not able to lift all these big weights impacting on their uh, on their performance on the field? No, not particularly. It's been out of a routine. Okay. These are people of habit. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let us know at RL on our wire. Leeds want to make the top four. I think they've been written off a bit too early. I'll tell you, I'll tell you now, Leeds won't make the top four. Okay. Leeds won't make the Fair top enough. four. Well, we're going to look at one of the success stories now. Now they, these two have had their uh, say on Leeds. Let's look at the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. Brian Smith left, mm. was it four games ago? It was <laughs> doom and gloom, tales of war, the club's got rotten to the core. Spirited effort at Hull, three wins on the spin. Tom Johnson's the new superhero, he Michael Carter's is. a legend. What's happened? Tom Johnson is the story of Easter. Um, he scores wonderfully spectacular tries that gets him the headlines, but I would point again to Easter Monday at Headingley where he made three unbelievable try-saving tackles that won them the game. He is now looking a complete player and he's looking like he's having real fun out there. He's, the, the, the really interesting thing about him is he doesn't have a rugby league heritage. He was a footballer until mm -hmm. I think he was about yeah. 14, 15. Yeah. And if there are athletes out there that can be that good in rugby league, that's where we should be fishing for more players. Because mm. he is a talent. He's got wonderful footwork. He's a joy to watch. There's a couple of other young guys in the squad as well that are obviously relishing um, the chance that they're Well, the getting. full back is one, isn't Jowett it? Was Jowett, brilliant. outstanding uh, And the again. try that he set up uh, at the weekend for, for Johnson. So, again, Gary's going to disagree, but you have to be careful about overexposure of young players. The game has changed. It is different, no matter what you say. And oh, let me just come in here then, Phil. And if, if Tom Johnson and Jowett, if Chris Chester came to them to say, "Hey, listen, you know, you've played a few games now and too many games. I'm going to rest you for the phone. I tell you what, they'll chop his head off." But he did that. They with, would absolutely he, he did, chop he his did head off. He did that with Max oh. Jowett at Headingley on oh. Easter Monday. He oh, played Craig right. Hall. No, yeah, they, 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 they would absolutely. I tell you what, they got the chairman, Michael Catton, and say sack him. I, I think sack they, him because I don't deserve to be dropped. You I, can't. I'm you, not saying that. We're talking about confidence. Hold on, hold on. Ding, 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 again. How do you think you're talking about Rest him. Rubbish. Like Jordan Lilly's not playing for Leeds. And he's, he's not being rested. Be said to Feverston when he didn't want to be. To learn his trade because he's not ready to play week in, week out at Super League level. They're not babies. They're not in the nappies. Some of them Leeds players are in the nappies at the moment. They want to change him. I thought we'd gone off with No, but you can't keep, you can't keep saying we've got to rest players. You the do have to look 22. after your assets. It's, it, it's easier when you're an outside back. And Tom Johnson is the kind of guy that we should all be paying to go and see every week. He's a, he is a oh, real, he's, he's real quality. talent. He's England quality. I, I only wish we had some fixtures that he could play in for England. Well, that will, that, that will come later in the season. Or even the England, or even the England Knights. Back to the initial point, then, Phil. What has happened... In a Again, month I, that has I, turned weight further out. Not go, even a month. I'd go back to this elusive commodity that, that Gary would know about, confidence. I think if, if, you, if things start clicking for you and they go for you and the right players are in the right positions, they've got really settled halfbacks. Everything revolves around the halfbacks. Liam Finn and Miller are looking like a settled set of halfbacks. It doesn't always work for them. They don't always take the right option. But they know their old Nick Scruton's tackle at the weekend where he tracked back, saved a certain try. That tells you everything about... 
people are believing in each other. They're, they're not relying on individuals shooting out of a line and trying to solve problems themselves. They've got the team ethic, and at the moment it's working for them, and they should, they should milk it for all it's worth. I also think that by focusing on Scruton's tackle, which was magnificent, we missed Ben Jones Bishop's tackle on Junior South towards the end of the game, which was, again, a, a game saver. So they've got players that are pulling off those things, and, and as a unit they're working. All I'm saying is, as, as young kids, we've got to look after them. Is there an element, Scoey, that Wakefield, their run started uh, against Huddersfield, they preyed on Huddersfield's weakness, they went mm. to Headingley, they preyed on mm. Leeds' weakness. Absolutely. And then the big game, for me, the big game was Salford, when we expected them to win, they went and won it. Our team's now starting to stop fearing the big boys. Uh, yeah, why not? You know, the way, the, the way that they're playing. And uh, what I will say, I'll, uh, I'll agree with Phil there from the half back point of view, and I'm sure we'll talk about it later in the show, we'll talk about Warrington. The reason why Warrington will win, will win the, the uh, I reckon the Super League, I reckon they'll finish the top, and if the Challenge Cup's fair to them, I reckon, that, I reckon Warrington will do the, uh, the treble because they've got the most creative half-backs in Super League. So now, yes, we're talking about, and we're talking sense here now, Phil, you're talking <laughs> a bit of sense about the half-backs there. Yeah, they've got, they've got a, a settled half-back partnership in Jacob Miller and Liam Finn, and I agree with you, at times, at times they're not the most creative and whatever, but they're happy with each other. They're identified yeah. to each role. As we said as well, Mark, Jacob Miller, there's a player in Jacob Miller, but now he's been allowed to express that. When he was at Hull, he was a little bit lost because he played to a structure. Under Brian Smith, played to a structure, and I'll tell you what as well, now Brian Smith has gone, you can even see the smiles even on the chairman in Michael Carter. Not because of winning, because I think he felt himself... But I think mm, they needed that yeah. Brian Smith grounding. He put the foundations uh, no, in. No, 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 rubbish. No, no, no. Well, I don't think so anyway. I don't think so, because if Brian Smith had still been there, Wayfield would be bottom of the league. Don't worry about that. Chris Chester has changed it. Yeah, yeah. Chris Chester has changed it. But what, what Brian Smith the players, has it, given them, he's given them a base fitness level, which they didn't have the year before, and he's given them belief and structure in each other. They've then had the shackles taken off by William well, well, Chester okay, 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 and, well, and now they're playing and enjoying well, let me themselves. Just tell you then, the structure what Wafer were playing under Brian Smith, they would have been bottom of the league now. It's as simple as that. Chris Chester's got sure of that, is that his players be uh, <clears throat> play with that smartness and that vision and that awareness. Play with some expression of yourself. And now we're seeing that player in Jacob Miller, what is a decent standoff. Mm -hmm. You know, he's playing with that vision. And when I saw the interview from Chris Chester the other day, he's got a smile on his face, and that's what he's brought to Wakefield. He's brought to Wakefield that man management style. Well, well listen, I'm going to let you off the leash. You can go out there and play what you want to see, and when you've got to get in the defensive line, because you will cough the ball, you will make, you will make some penalties. Well, you, get yourself back the guy there, who doing a great exemplifies job. that more than any other is Danny Kerman. Who about a month ago you were you were saying he wasn't playing particularly yeah, well? He didn't look like he I'll was tell you happy why, because we were playing under Brian Smith. But he didn't look happy, did he? Were, now, yeah, well, now he's a really none of the players, important cog Phil, none of the in players their machine. None of the players looked happy. Look at him now. If you ask all the Wakefield players, they'll say, "What's day? What's changed? Brian Smith's gone." Chris Chester, uh, well, yeah, we're delighted Chris is here because he's given us that freedom and that awareness and let us play a little bit. But I'll tell you, all the players, he'll say, because Brian Smith's gone. Let's hear then from the Wildcats boss, Chris Chester, speaking after the win over Salford. He admitted that it was a tough day for the Wildcats. We uh, we had a lot of defending to do that second half, but uh, you know, it showed the character of the boys. When we, you know, we've got a, a, a front rower chasing back Michael Dobson you know, to save a try. You know, that's what this club's all about. It's all about desire, it's all about attitude and um, you know, there's plenty of that today. You know, deceptive are very strong when he carries the ball and he, he can finish a try as well. And it's all you know, I've just got to make sure I keep um, young Tom grounded. Um, he's an exceptional talent and uh, he's a pleasure to work with. Um, he won us a game last week against Leeds and um, you know he's won us a game again with his uh, with his try scoring today. Well, as they say, winning becomes a habit, don't they? We, we, we've just got to, um, you know, just continue the, the momentum, continue the, the work that we're doing out on the training field, and you know, we're hopeful that some more results will, will, will come along the way. Um, we've got Wigan next week; it's going to be a extremely tough, um, tough game. But um, there's, there's a lot of confidence in this group of players at this moment in time. And, you know, we're not afraid of anybody. Yeah, you know the third game's always the always the toughest. The third game's always the the toughest mentally and physically. Um, we were out on his feet that last 15 minutes with the amount of defending we did, but um, we just kept turning up for each other, and you know we found some energy from 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 somewhere. Um, so yeah, really really proud of the 
of, of the boys today, one to one to seventeen. It, it, it took a, a massive team effort to to get over a, a very good Salford side. Welcome back to the last tackle. Uh, Phil and Gary, uh, hopefully, are going to calm down now. Uh, we're going to talk quickly Boxing. about Salford. Mix for them, mm. competing every week, Phil, but not yeah. you know that's they'll be disappointed Again, that I, they I lost them. Go back to what I was saying about missing Robert Louis. He he was very important to them. Uh, Michael Dobson and Louis seem to be a really good combination. Uh, you know, one, one's got the kicking game and the organisational skills. The other improvises a little bit off the back of that. And the, they've got some some good players out wide. I said before, Murdoch Masilla, I think again is a is a real asset for them. But they just don't seem to have that link when Louis isn't there. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know what Gary thinks about playing half backs at full back, which seems to be a trend at the moment. Gareth O'Brien there for Salford and. We've seen Ryan Briley now move to, to full-back at Huddersfield. Um, that, I think that exposes a couple of things if you're a slight player. Uh, you can see and drift into the line a bit like Luke Dawn does, and he switched between the two. But if you're a lightweight player, nimble on your feet, it, it's very easy to be steamrolled over. Um, again, I think that's happening a little bit at Salford. That O'Brien, you know, Teams are now playing at O'Brien, particularly on attack. Uh, but they're in a better place than they were this time last year. I'm still not 100% convinced they'll make the top eight. Um, they need to keep all of their star men out there all the time and their issues now are, are off the field with, with not only the, um, the impending investigation into the salary cap but also into, into crowd trouble. So I think that's probably more important for them at the moment than, than even how they're playing. Yeah, yeah, they are a better team but um, it's consistency, isn't it? That's, that, that's a worry for them. You know, They seem to play uh, pretty well at home and uh, away that uh, struggle a little bit. But yeah, it's just that consistency. As far as um, with the halfback, you mentioned that O'Brien, I think he's a fullback to be honest with you. He tried at Warrington loads of times, and I think he went to St. Helens at Castleford. I think fullback is his best position. Yet they have missed Louis. Well, you will do that to a solid water mm -hmm. player there, but uh, I think Salford will be all right. If they get that consistency, I think at times, you know, they win more games at home than what maybe people will say they're going to lose. But uh, I think Salford will make the top eight. They, okay. might, they might worry a little bit if Justin Carney was going to be out for any length of time. I don't think his ankle injury is as serious mm. as they thought it might have been, but they need to, they need strike players that can get them points. And uh, if you take people like Louis and, and Carney out of that, then it just blunts them a little bit. It does. Uh, it was a disappointing afternoon then for the Red Devils. Let's see now from their coach, Ian Watson. The start of the game didn't help us, to be fair. We kind of gave them a little bit of a start, um, and then we was on an uphill battle. But once we got the game back in our grasp a little bit and was, we looked like we was the, the stronger team in that period and then we just didn't um, take the right decisions, should we say, we um, weren't very smart with the ball, um, we had a few of the wrong options and that's co cost us at the end of the day. Yeah, they're, they're all a, a fair way away, Bido and people like that, um, well Arrakia, um, we, we lost copy in the warm up today as well with um, a back spasm, um, just something out of the blue just came on. Um, so just one of them things. So yeah, we we have got a few injuries. Um, like, like say Tommy, uh, Greg Johnson, um, Justin potentially now as well. Um, Rob Lewis is not too far away. He's probably one of the closer ones to coming back. Um, we'll assess where we're going for the rest of the week on on the back of what we've pick up, picked up today. But it, it's just one of them things. It opens the door for somebody else to have an opportunity. Um, you can't just keep going on about what you've not got. You've got to deal with what you've got. Was, yeah, our, our defence was awful at the beginning of the game to be fair um, and then to be fair we've been really consistent in that area to, uh, defending um, today we've we dropped off that especially like um, we put a big emphasis on like our kick chase and that was poor in the first half um, and then that kind of snowballed and allowed them to get a lot of field position and then they scored when they got down there so our goal line D wasn't great as well when over the last few weeks it's been really good our goal line D so it's something that we need to look at and just keep reminding the players of how good they actually are when they do it right. Um, it's just a, it's a belief thing. And, you, know, you said perhaps the scoreline wasn't a fair reflection of your side effects with the majority of the game. No, the scoreline is what it is. <laughs> it doesn't tell a lie, does it? Um, they, scored more. They, they did the basics a lot better than us, to be fair. They, they ran hard at start. They, were, they, were just, they kept the game plan real simple. Uh, and they came through the other side and they deserved the win. It's very tight now down at the bottom, isn't it? It's great to see yourself obviously up in the top by the way, if you're challenging there as well, different names down at the top 
Yeah, it, it's a good competition that any any team can beat each other, and that's the kind of competition that you want. Uh, makes it nervous when you're watching and when you're coaching in it. But that's the kind of competition that you want in uh, the rugby league. You want the close game, so people are going to the games not knowing who's really going to win. Um, it'd be great if we knew we were turning up and winning all the time. But like I say, it's it's what the competition should be about. Ian Watson there speaking after the Red Devils were beaten at the weekend. Uh, let's have a look then at Hull FC, the black and white sky. Uh, not long ago, Lee Radford kicked out of his own dressing room. Since then. Four wins out of four. Uh, rightly so, and the players themselves took on that responsibility. As we all know, the pathetic performance uh, against Witness, they took the responsibility, wasn't good enough. And uh, quite simple now. I know Phil keeps saying players should be protected, player welfare and too many games, but uh, I'll tell you what, Hull FC had won Easter every, every week, well, won't they? In Play fairness, three games in, you know, in, three games in eight days. Phil, great results. They beat Warrington on Easter Monday, mm. and then they bring back the likes of Minicello, Fanua, uh, Sika Manu, they've yeah. made six changes Absolutely. and six improvements. That's no disrespect to the lads that missed out. They brought in six big players. And it's it's having fit and big enough squads to manage them at this time of the but year. They've all got the same size squads, 25 to 30 But they haven't players. all got players fit. And Hull at the moment, touch wood, and hopefully it continues. For them. I think there's two words that sum up Hull at the moment. I, and I don't think, for all of the excitement machine that Tom Johnson is, the guy for me who, who had the greatest Easter and, and rallied his team was Gareth Ellis. Well, Just thought he was at, every time I saw I anything to do game, with Hull, he was magnificent. I went to Langtree Park. There was a spell into the second half where he made about six tackles out of twelve, and they were he was smashing people. Mm. And Lee Radford said to us after, he said, "I don't know why people run at him. They yeah. must be, in, you know, he said, well, must be in and that's his stock. But it's taken him yeah. what nearly two years to get back to that level of mm. fitness that he had in the NRL. Um, and that again, we won't go back to player welfare, but I do think. We, we expect a hell of a lot of our players, but when you've got somebody like Gareth Ellis fit and in form, that is his stock in trade. You don't go anywhere near him. But it's he a, is you, the yeah. most destructive tackler in the game. Well, you mentioned that, and it's, it Gareth doesn't Ellis, half lift your team. Oh yeah, I, I agree. So it's the same as uh, Frankenstein Lynch, uh, Cass, you know, Andy Lynch. So like, we, players we, don't play too much. We, we, we you know, we, we was there uh, yesterday with him, and, and Gareth Ellis is the same. He wants he wants to be out there. He wants to play every game. He wants to play every minute. And so do so do a lot but of the players. But he wants to play every game. So do fit enough to be able to play yeah, well, every game. Well, at, t- at times, you know, if the coach says if you've got a bit of a bump when you stay out there, course they will because it's in the DNA, you know, and. Well, Which is why we need to protect them. Oh, no, I don't buy into that one a little bit. And it's, well, let's, I, come on, let's concentrate on the positives. Yeah, four yeah, wins in four uh, for Hull. And Mark Snead yeah. playing particularly well. Which... Mm. They got the job goal, but again, he's not got not creative point. No, no, I, I, saw, I, 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 I saw a lot of feedback, lot of feedback from Hull fans saying that he's played very well in the last Phil, three games. Phil, this is why I say about Warrington. They have got the two best creative halfbacks in Super League. Wigan are clueless. Leeds are clueless. At times, Hull are clueless. St. Talents are clueless from there. Castleford, Gailey is okay there. Bruffy, Huddersfield, so forget about them. So the rest of them, realistically, they haven't got that creativity because at the end of the day, I don't care less what anybody says, defence is okay. But if you don't score more points with the opposition, I think a you will not win. On what I you saw on Langtree win. Park, Phil, they dominated the second mm. half. They're not and scoring enough points. It took a 45-yard drop yeah, yeah. to win the game. To yeah. get them out there. And this is why I'm saying Warrington will certainly win the grand final because they've got the best two creative well, half-backs. Well, that's assuming that they stay fit. Yeah. Let's exactly. talk about Sam well, Ratchford, Ratchford's, not, Ra- Ratchford's not bad, a bad foil. He hasn't got the individualism as what Sandow's got with the chip over the tops a little bit. But Ratchford will be out and after he's at foil, mm. Kurt Gidley who's the organiser. I'm not saying he won't be. Let's talk it. Let's take it again. I'm enjoying time. the show, by the way. It's I know, great. I know. Brilliant. Um, I'll be glad when it's over. <laughs> Hull. <laughs> You're making the decision on points. Hull beat, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Hull beat St Helens. I said Ellen's going to be a little bit worried now, Phil, because yes. they're, they're huffing and puffing a little yeah. bit, aren't they? they? Do, again, they don't seem to have any consistency at all at the moment this year. And I don't know if that's the half-back partnerships and the fact that they can't find somebody to play with Luke Walsh, because he seems to be their number one, as, in, as indeed if he's fit he should be. But they just don't seem to have, again, the same go-forward that Alex Wormsley gave them last year. Um, the mix doesn't seem quite right. Um, John Wilkin, obviously, is... Uh, move between half and, and back row and, and again I'm, I'm not sure at this stage in his career that that's particularly working. They have had some serious injuries, I know mm. we keep going on about injuries but they've now lost Makinson, again they're going to score less points when Percival and Makinson aren't in the team. That's a it, fair it, enough point uh, and they did miss a couple of chances I thought of the weekend but they didn't create a right no, either. No, they seem to be playing at the moment in an inhibited style of game compared to the way mm. Saints normally play. Now I don't know if that's an instruction from Kieran, I don't know if that's 
because they can only go with the resources that they've got. But again, I think the, the similarity between Leeds and St Helens is the fans are being asked to watch a brand of football that they're not used to. And it's not about the winning or the losing sometimes, it's about the manner in which you play. And both of those teams are not playing to, to their type at the moment. Saints, should they be worried? I mean, they're, <laughs> what are they now? They're uh, six, six, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. six in the table. So. Without a doubt, and I don't think Kieran knows what his best team is. And there's one thing for sure now, Tavis Burns, I don't think he's going to play for Saints again, is it? Unless... Well, it's good to see Theo Farge being given yeah, a run. But he, he, he is going to be, need a little bit of time to bed in. Mr. Well, I'll tell you what, from 20 yards he, better, he, better to, he better bed in very quickly because they need mm -hmm. somebody because it looks like Tavis Burns has been blown out, doesn't it? So, yeah, Luke Walsh needs a little bit of help there. But, yeah, I think it's it's a huge issue uh, for St. Helens. Phil's mentioned there that the brand of believe what certainly what the fans are used to and, and certainly what the Saints players are used to. So, whether it, it's got to be coming from the coaching staff, the style of rugby league, what they're playing. And at this moment in time, it's boring and it's clueless. At RL on RY, do you disagree, agree with what we're saying? It is up for debate as always here on The Last Tackle. Looking, uh, it's not been a great Easter for Widness, has it? They went in top of the pile, they come out, they're still in the top four, but three defeats. They've had three very, very tough fixtures, three. you've got to give them that. And they're starting to see some injuries. You know, the Runciman's missed the odd game, we picked him out. Kevin Brown hasn't played at all over the Easter period and he is so pivotal to what they do. It's great, more importantly perhaps than the results, because they've bought those with the way they played earlier in the season. Is they've had the, the re-signing of Joe Mellor, which I think is really important for them. Christine's just re-signed for them as well. Mm. So I think that, that's more important at the moment. They need to hold on to these players that have given them such a great start. I thought they were pretty dogged in Catalan. Well, uh, it, they've lost was, three it, games, but they've not been blown no, away anywhere, have no. they? No, and, and it was one of those typically horrible third games at Easter. It, was, it, it resorted to five drives and a kick because there were plenty of busted players out there on both sides. And you say that though, Phil. I've got to pick you up on this because I this weekend. There's a difference between the excitement best two and quality. Games. Yeah. What defence did you see yesterday? Um, yeah, it was like I, one of them I, where they, no, I, where they grabbed think, the tags, wasn't yeah, it? Off your shorts. Which is fine, and it's exciting. I, I have absolutely no issue with the excitement that we're seeing in a lot of the games, but I think again the quality level because of the amount of... I, I don't want to hear coaches saying anymore, guys are just turning up and playing, they can't train. Um, and that they have to be needled to get out there. And we're struggling to name... I mean, Workington this week named 14 players. They, they only had 14 players that could play. We don't want to get to that point. We need to not only see excitement, but a, a measure of quality within that excitement. Do you really think there's been quality throughout Super League this year? After what? No, 10, no, 10 games? no. I don't, I don't think. I don't think I... Anyway, so I don't think we could just play them Easter. But would you would you scrap the the Easter fixtures then? Would you just scrap, I'd, I'd scrap just the, the second fixture? Yeah, absolutely. You would scrap it, yeah, yeah, and I think we're coming towards that. I think you can't have a duty of care policy where you're bringing in things like concussion protocols and at the same time ask players to play on a four-day turnaround. I mean, we, we look at now trying to keep a gap of at least five days for the Thursday game, but we don't do that over Easter. There's a, there's a huge anomaly there. So, I, I, again, I think it's, it's not even about what we're watching. It's about, you mentioned Frankenstein Lynch. Why, you know, he can't go and have treatment on his hand, which, which is, you know, his coach has said is almost disfigured because we're making him play too often. Uh, so yes, I think there is a huge issue about that, and I think it does affect the quality. The Catalan Widners game was great for spirit. It was a team, particularly Widners, who had to, again, fly out there and, and with, a, with a lesser squad than they've got. They, they show some real determination to stay in that game. Um, but I'm not sure I want to... It's, it's almost like being a rubbernecker at a car crash sometimes, watching mm. these players who are, who are busted. What is Widness aim now? They're obviously still top in the eight. four. Is it just to make the yeah, aim? Yeah, yeah, top eight. They, their initial aim was to not be in the bottom four, and that mm. will still be their aim. And they're almost halfway to achieving that. Mm. If they get any higher, uh, they'll take that. Well, you say that. They're only four points in front of uh, Wakefield. Mm. At the minute, and mm. they have played... Again, more than two yeah, yeah. of the teams Oh, they won't be them. taking it for granted, but I think that um, if they can get Kevin Brown back, particularly... What is wrong with him? What's his injury? I'm not sure. Mm. What about Catalan, Scully? Team of uh, <coughs> all-stars, really. They're, yeah, they are. They're sneaking up now. They're moving to fourth over the weekend. I, I genuinely think they're contenders. Well, they are, and uh, and that's as you mentioned, a team of a team of all stars. They're coming together as a team, aren't they? You know, and and the plus thing about it, um, Todd Carney didn't play, so uh, the other players themselves started thinking, well, we're not going to be a one-man team, and we're going to making sure that we don't let ourselves down in his uh, in his own backyard. But again, 
big Dave Taylor for me was absolutely outstanding. He had a hand in the first try with Pat Richards playing like a centre, and then he'll take the ball up all day, give you that hard yards. And well, that uh, is then, one, and, one handed uh, pick up. And then at the end, you know, when they cut the ball, the one handed pick up, just like a young Scoey darting over and uh, over for the over for, over for the the same, It's the same weight as you at the moment. Uh, I'll do the funnies, Phil. But, um, but no, absolute brilliant. Dave Taylor, he'll be up there for the Man of Steel at the moment with Ben Curry and, uh, and Marty Russell. Did, but yeah, the they do be still a clock off during games, Catalan. It, I, I don't know if. Um, well, most teams do, don't they? Well, but they seem to go ahead and think, yeah, we, we can do this. And then for half an hour, they're scrapping around a bit. And it's good to see Morgan Escaray back. But I would well, say that. They, uh, I think he's, he's an exciting talent. We talk about Tom Johnson. They're the kind of guys that you will pay but to But one of the most see. important players as well, and I'll tell you what, what leads with the him is Paul Ayrton. Well, he's and abs absolutely outstanding. And he's got he that dual role with Pelissier. Yeah, so well, I don't, I, don't, I don't like him. I think but the, but the two of them so together. I think he's yeah. so annoying him. Yeah, he's compared to you, Scotty. Uh, what about the others? <laughs> I think Glenn Stewart's the other one as well. Oh, uh, I know well, you. Well, I know well, you don't well, do stats, well, but well, his well, are well, astonishing. I was just going to mention him. You know, uh, okay, defensive there, but taking the ball up and uh, yeah, he's well, he's a, he's a quality player. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't play in NRL like he has done. And uh, with and he there. he is the but, sort but of the, guy that when they start yeah. slipping off the pace, will say, "Come on, guys, we've got to go back to the basics here and but as you get ourselves there, mate, down the field." The Catalans, the coming as a team. And I'll tell you what, they will make the top four. They will. They'll get really interesting when the pitches dry out because I think we'll see some exciting stuff from them. And I know you don't rate Richie Myler, but I think as the pitches dry out, he's going to become even more influential for them. OK, that's enough. Don't, but don't rise to the bait, Scoy. Leave it. Uh, at RL on our wife, you want to get in touch. We're going to talk about the big game at the Jungle on Sunday. Scoy and I were there to witness it. Uh, it was like touch and pass. It was like basketball. 38-34, Scoy. Castleford, they won it, they lost it, and they won it again. Well, you were just like singing the song like I was and doing a, a bit of a dance there, Martin. <laughs> you was, uh, it was, you score, we score, you score, we. And then I say the both coach, obviously Paul Hansen can't tear his hair up because unfortunately Paul he hasn't got any. And Daryl Power with the, with the silver hair, what Daryl's got there now, but uh, as an entertainment value, it was good. And uh, say Luke Gale at times, you know, he came to the fore and and got cast a victory, but uh, the Giants, you know, the, uh, they had the game won, what was it, I think 11, 10 minutes ago, eight, eight, point, points, in eight points clear, and uh, the body language was great, and then they just let Casford back in, a couple of silly penalties, but I guess one big issue has got to be, you know, the scenario of, with, with Danny Brough, you know, we was there watching it. Has he ever had as bad a game as he had yesterday? I don't think for so. me, he was awful I, I, I don't think so, and some of his passes, and... Um, and I say at times there were hospital passes that were never on, and and, and I read Danny Brough. You know everybody knows uh, the the accolades what I've given him, but on on Sunday, you know the performance is what he has done for Huddersfield over the years. You know his consistency of play. You, you'd say they're up between the eight and the nines out of ten. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I couldn't give him no more than a two, and I could only give him two to be honest with you because of his goal kicking. Apart from that. I think it is the worst game I've seen Danny Brook play. One so way. is he an issue? Is, there's, there's got to be an issue with Danny. Maybe well, he, the coach he's so, the he's so influential, isn't he? Oh, he is. Yeah. And, and if they were to lose him, as rumours are that even though he's denied it today, he, he may be the target of another club. It may even be better for both parties if he isn't there in the, in the, uh, in the short term. Then you worry about the quality of play that Huddersfield have lost this year, and that's why they're in the position that they're in. Have they got their recruitment wrong with hindsight? They've brought in two they're good they're, players, yeah, but, but not they've enough. lost more. Yeah, and I think again, you you can't uh, probably legislate for the Brett Ferris scenario. That's but at the same time, he could have he could have done his knee in game yeah, one, and we've not seen him all. No, year. I think their squad was too thin, and, and, and in all the preview programmes that we had, we were saying the worry for them would be if they couldn't find their combinations, if they if they did it, get injuries. As it happens, they haven't got too many injuries. In fact. Paul was saying, what, two weeks ago, he was picking from strength. He had some they have, yeah, they've had problems. But, but I look at it, they're minus 49 points. They've lost eight games, so they're not losing by a lot. No. But they, they're losing. Yesterday, again, they found a way to me to lose rather than go on and win the game. It's a confidence thing. It's this, it's this commodity that every coach talks about, every player talks about. It's totally indefinable. When it goes, quality people start doubting themselves. Mm. Um, and they start doing things that are uncharacteristic. And it's, it's human nature. Because you're so desperate to put, you get 80 minutes in the shop window, we get a chance next week to put things right. Things start going wrong, you don't put them right. And all of a sudden you start saying, I don't know who's going to get, who's, who do we follow? Has Paul Anderson been clever or naive by saying they're not playing for the top four? Because we criticised James Webster, wholesale criticism yep. for him saying, look, we're going for the middle eight, we know what we're at. Is he trying to take the pressure off yes. by saying, look, let's just get a couple yeah. of wins yes. and see where that takes Absolutely. us? Absolutely. I think it's the reverse to what Castleford said at the start of the season 
where they said we're gonna, we think we're ready to be a top four team, and indeed they might be, but they've struggled a little bit. Um, I'm not saying because of the mantle that they were going to be a top four team. They again have been another team that have had to cope with with injuries that they didn't have the year before. But I think Huddersfield now are saying let's be realistic. Uh, you know we, we've been. I think statistically the most consistent team mm. on a week-to-week -week basis in, in recent season, years in yeah. Super League, but they haven't got that this year. I think Paul's saying don't judge us by that, judge us by the fact that we've dropped our, our um, ambition a little bit, but secretly or, or overtly within the dressing room, he'll be saying, oh no, come on, we're not writing this season off. We got to the jungle yesterday, we looked at who was missing for the Tigers, let's talk about them now. Lots and lots of talent sat in the stand and yet they found a way to win. You mentioned Luke Gale thought he had a great game. Lynch we talked about. I mean, there was a time he went down injured after about an hour, didn't he? I think they brought the toolkit on to tighten the nuts and bolts a bit and get him back out. What about the high voltage, um, you know, generator, I think, just to get some more voltage in it when he came on for the last, what, six or seven minutes. He wanted to be part of that. But I thought the, the winging himself in uh, Hitchcock, the, the way that he took his tries as well, was brilliant. But I think it's just the spirit what Casper had. And I think Daniel's mentioned, I think he said to... Uh, to Danny O's assistant coach before the game, you know, I don't think we've got enough bodies or enough quality. You know, when you look at the Huddersfield team team sheet, but uh, but as I say, the spirit, what they've got, and, and they play with that openness, don't they? You know, with that that vision and that awareness, what Luke Gale I, brings I, there. I think they've uh, had a fabulous that, Easter. I, I when when you think that they beat Leeds, they then had to fly to Catalan with a busted squad. I'm, again, they were clever. They stayed there till the Tuesday. I think they they built in some R and R to that, so they could come back and be as prepared as they could be for the third game. So I think that's to their absolute credit. Again, I, I wasn't there. I was, I was unfortunately listening to you guys. Uh, Mike McMeekin seems to have a big game. Mm. He did. Very oh, he good. did. So that would be a bloke from London. Do you know what? He was, he was quite lucky because he did a flop, you know, and <laughs> uh, you could see he were absolutely, uh, what, really, really mad with himself. And I tell you, we were lucky not to get brought off. And then within two minutes... Down, can, the, down, down the, down the right he, side, scores the try. Two minutes after, great, what an lovely well. pass. Like, like, like my old mucker Lee Crooks, great pass around there to set the try up again. But uh, he's a good player, I like him in the mm -hmm. second row. And the big Cumbrian as well, the, the big well, Cumbrian lad. What's his name? Mayor. Mayor. Oh, gee, I tell you what, he's big and raw born. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Mason, you say again, Phil, you mentioned that these kids, you know, they need protecting the door. They want to be out there. They want to be out there. Oh, smashing absolutely, up and they up want and, to be out you know, there. They, it's they, whether, they want to get the bodies in there. Yeah, absolutely. But not. They want to play everyone. week in and week out. And I, I think the other thing about cast that's holding them together at the moment, we should talk about the spine of teams. Um, they've got two hookers, again, that they can interchange, Milner and McShane. They've got Luke Gale, who's who's out there again. A couple of times it sounded as though he might have been coming off because he'd taken a couple mm. of bangs. The, those important positions... Milner's they're, they're, impressed me settled. when he put them both mm. on, playing it a bit loose, and I thought, mm. I think Luke, he's actually... But also, as well, young, young, Hampshire, young Hampshire as well played well at full-back. That's his position full-back. He's not a standoff for mine. He's not the guy who can, who can who's got that vision and he's a little bit too slow in his thinking. But fullback yesterday, he played like a standoff, you know, asking mm. some questions with his ball skill. But yeah, great spirit down there at Cass. And as you can see, you know, with the sweet colour line coming on after and everybody's on the pitch and what have you. Yeah, great spirit. And Cass will make the eight without it. Whether they're good enough for the top four, pretty get much. Get some bodies back. Yeah, get some know. bodies back. You, you never know, but uh, it could be pretty tough. But one thing for sure, it's a great atmosphere down there. And yeah, well well done to the lads who, who stepped in yesterday. Yeah, yeah well, well done. Daryl Powell admitted it wasn't the greatest spectacle, but it was another two points for the Casford Tigers. I don't know if I've got much energy to talk. Uh, it was a crazy game, wasn't it? I, I think, yeah, probably. It's always, we, we've generally been pretty good over Easter, and obviously. Uh, I think last year we played OK out at this this stage and we were really, really good. But I haven't been able to rotate the, the team because obviously we've, you know, we had 10 guys missing today. We lost Grant Millington early. So it's made it really hard for us. Um, but yeah, it was. It, was a, it wasn't a great spectacle. I thought there were a lot of errors in there. And it was high drama as a result of that, looking at how it, how it went at the end. But from a, a coach's purest point of view, it was... Um, yeah, it wasn't where we would want to be. I just said to the boys, look, great win. Obviously, we needed to win. We were desperate to win. But uh, we have to be better than that. And um, obviously, they nodded and said, we know. And, and we've got to, we've just got to improve, really. And getting troops back will help us, because obviously, we, we're pretty low um, on personnel at the moment. Yeah, it's a massive win. Yeah, I mean, I, I said to Danny R before the game, I'm not sure whether we'll have enough to, to beat them today. Um, but I just, you know, we, we did just about, I thought, and uh, yeah, 
you know, Gailey come up with some key plays at the end. I thought Tom Holmes did well, some of the stuff that he did. Uh, it was a massive win for us. So for, for us to, to beat Leeds here, uh, pretty busted troops wise and then beat Huddersfield there is is obviously big for us and um, some of the young players getting experienced, you know, Stanji and Goodstead moving forward uh, and obviously the two points it was absolutely crucial. Um, as you can see at the moment, you know, there's a couple of clubs that have responded really well, Wakefield and OKR to, to new coaches and the competition is pretty tight, so it's a really big win for us. Darrell Powell there speaking after the Tigers beat the Giants. Let's hear from the Giants boss Paul Anderson who said it's the same old story for the Giants. Yeah, same story, same story. Just sitting and repeating myself constantly. Uh, we've all got a part to play where we're at. Uh, just wants to say it's much penalties today. I think it's just the errors that we gave away. And uh, yeah, it's poor execution at the end of the day. Scored enough points, give ourselves a chance, and then found a way to give it away. It's the same story. And you might as well just go over the last few weeks of your press stuff and pick it up again because that's where we're at. But it's uh, something we need to snap out of pretty quick. Positive today is we scored a 30 odd point. Negative is obviously the, the ones that they got. And uh, I think we, uh, when we got to certain points of the field and executed, I thought we'd, we looked all right at times. We executed, scored some nice tries. But. Uh, like some soft ones in as well. Our, com our ball control and composure is not, not great at the moment, which I'm sure I've said that before. Yeah, I think when you're in this position, what you end up doing is try, is trying real hard. I thought Bruffy's effort, I never ever questioned him, and I'm not going to do. But uh, just, just as a whole, I think when you're in this position and you get opportunities, you feel like you have to score all the time, and uh, it, uh, it can get you at some point. It gets us all. Yeah, I think gift, like I said, gift, gifted a lot of errors, gifted a lot of field position away. Penalties were really what they were. You could almost turn around and say it's a typical week after Easter sort of game. Scoreline would suggest that a lot of low energy out there, but uh, yeah, we've got to be better than that. It's the same same story for us. Which I'm not going to turn around and tell you that. Well, I will if I say it, but it's something that needs to be addressed, and it's something I say every week. So Paul Anderson there speaking, the Giants, bottom of the table. Going into the weekend, the top two did battle at the DW fellas uh, and Warrington came out on top quite comfortably in the end. I think. Fabulous start, made a brilliant start to the game. Possibly the best 20 minutes of the season that we've seen. The, the issue is going to be how long is Sandow out for? Because he is such a talismanic figure at the moment. Uh, Curry is just loving playing outside. It looks fantastic. The, the wingers are enjoying uh, Lynham again. Looks like he's got a new lease of life. Mm -hmm. uh, Penny scoring the spectacular tries. Uh, they, it, they're just a joy to watch at the moment. And, and I think the adversity of last year has helped them this year. That you know, I, I would imagine that when they were away at their pre-season camp, they sat down and evaluated what hadn't worked for them, how they wanted to play this year, who they wanted to be their leaders. Um, what the various scenarios were going to be if players were injured. So, you know, Matty Russell's been brilliant. If he has to step out, then you can put Ratchford in either at fullback or you can bring him in at standoff if you need to. They've got a lot of versatility in their squad. Um, and and I, I, again, I like Sko, if they can steer clear of injury, um, they're travelling really well at the moment. I think the, the, the great thing about what I liked about the Warrington team, they took on the challenge of the Wigan pack, didn't they? Mm. They weren't going to get intimidated. No. They weren't going to get bullied. Oh, and, and, and they were going to move the ball wide. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, Take exactly. them out of the game. That's the way, that's the way they play. And, and, and as I say, you know, we said, OK, he pulled his hamstring. But again, we saw the, the quality of him as an individual. And I say, the kick over, he had a kick over the, the side there to, to Kevin Penny. And uh, the long pass to Lyman, brilliant. The guidance and the, the coolness of Gidley, but the forward pack, you know, led by Aston mm. Caesar, Chris Hill, we've seen the best now. Darryl Clark. And Darryl Clark yeah. coming back to something like his Castleford form. And as you mentioned, it, they've got the right balance, but one thing for sure on Friday night, it just proved that Warrington, they'll play for the full 80 minutes and they won't be bullied and they won't be intimidated. They are the real deal this year, Warrington. What about Wigan? Like Leeds, struggling to score points. Yeah, Third the lowest scorers the two in the Mark, the two structured for me, Wigan. The two structured. And they just can't get away from it, can they? I know Lachlan again playing at number six, never going to work. And he went off with, with hamstring problems for how long he is. And as I say, Matty Smith at times is clueless. But they just cannot change the structure of where they play. Are they and needing Tomkins back? Well, the, the problem that they've got, I think, is that so much revolved around Macalora. Um, and again, it, it's as the season goes on and you realise that he's not there. 
that it really starts to hit. It's not the first couple of games he's not there, it's the longer it goes. And he was the fulcrum in the middle that a lot of this came from, a lot of the, their attitude comes from. Um, I think he created space for the halfbacks to work in. And they're another team that we should say, what, they had seven out, um, some key men. Mm. They're getting Joel Tompkins back, he'll give them something. They've now got two players leaving, which again, they'll want to go out on a high. Um, but does that unsettle a little bit? I think we've said, we, we quite rightly have said Tom Johnson had the, the Easter of all Easters. Don Manfredi wasn't far behind him. He's a, he's a mm. really exciting yeah. talent. Mm -hmm. um, he's playing so well at the moment, an absolutely devastating finisher because whereas Johnson's using all speed and step, Manfredi can do that but he's also got power as well. He seems a little bit more physically developed. Um, so in terms of young kids coming through and being given a chance, that's great. I would point to the fact that Manfredi's waited probably about 18 months and, and grown into this role and is now ready to take it. It's not quite the same as putting a kid in and expecting him to be at that level. Uh, but yeah, I think the worry for Wigan is not going to be their defence, it's not going to be their determination, it's not going to be their grit. It's going to be, will they have enough guys out there that can get the ball to these exciting wingers so that we can see the best of them and Charlie can go off in the, in the manner in which he deserves to. You, you've come out, you're adamant Warrington are going to do every, mm. win everything. Who's going, to, who's going to really be the threat, do you think? I wouldn't mean, just look at it, it's, it's Wigan to be honest with you. you know, Saints are off the boil, Leeds are off the boil. Inconsistency uh, from the other teams around them. Catalans and Hull won't be far off. Catalans and Hull won't be far off. My, my top four will be Warrington, Wigan, Catalans and Hull. That 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 will be my top four. I, so I, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't you most certainly wouldn't rule out Hull and Catalans. But at this moment in time, if I was going to say a grand final, it, w it would be Warrington and Wigan. I'm not sure you can draw a form line. I I haven't seen a season with so many injuries. There were, there was um, a report today that. Conservatively, 40 players were injured over Easter. Again, that's determining the league table too much for me at the moment. Mm. Well, plenty to discuss, as always, on the last tackle. Thanks to Gary, thanks to Phil, thanks to you for watching. And we'll do it all again next week. It's another busy, busy week of rugby league action. We'll end by scrumming down with Mark Minicello of Hull FC. Uh, Mark Minicello, back row. Ah, uh, the misses. Ah, uh, bitter. Ah, uh, Italy. Oh, um. I don't know, I don't know it's his favourite way to um, St Helens. Wakefield. <laughs> Survivor, is that even a show? Yeah, Grant Millington said yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my wife's cakes. Worst trainer. Um, in the gym, nah, Sneedy. Uh, Gaz. Gruffiest teammate would be Surely. My sporting idol. Uh, uh, I'm a fan of Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs>